so John, welcome. Thank you very um, much. Thank you for inviting me. We're, we're seeing a lot of conversation, obviously, the industry. Um, cloud services are increasing data flow massively. People are needing to re-architect for the future. What changes have you been seeing? Um, I think we're seeing some quite fundamental changes. Um, it's always hard to define where the breakpoints are. But um, I think one thing that Australia has always had is a certain level of isolation. And uh, if you look at data flows and you correlate that to international communications, actually Australia has not been well served. But in the last uh, year, the amount of new capacity that's been added in terms of subsea capability, but also where it's entering Australia, I think will fundamentally change the Australian data centre industry. And can you give us details on some of those? Well, specifically, um, there's been a huge capacity increase on the uh, east side, which is not unreasonable given that's where the majority of data centres are. But now for the first time, there is um, significant capacity appearing on the uh, west coast, which um, in civil terms, I would say means Western Australia is now open for data centre business. And with that connectivity comes uh, low latency communications, which means if you take it for we live in a world where your, your IP ping is your location, um, ASEAN and ANZ are, really are joining together. And if you look at where the epicentre of a region would be, it's Perth. So someone now looking at multi-hub strategies who might have naturally looked at Singapore and say East Coast Australia, now Perth sits right in the middle of that whole region. And that is a huge change. So how can we capitalise on that? Well, I think for, firstly we have to understand this. Um, and people have to really understand how data moves around, where the cable connectivity is, how the land connectivity works. And once you see that, you'll start to see the opportunities appearing. For instance, we talk about regional data centres, um, but then it's always connectivity that causes the problem. Where can we get the connections? How can it make sense? Now, if you look at where the cables run in Australia and how they're linked to the rest of the world, there really is a real opportunity for um, regional data centres. And if you're looking for one example, uh, just take Queensland. I wouldn't have thought the Sunshine Coast was a hotbed of cable connectivity, but it is now because the Sunshine Council has paid, I believe, 35 million pounds to essentially bring a sea cable directly into um, a cable landing station on the coast. Their view is that will give them an economic benefit of close to a billion dollars. So I think once you actually start to look at the opportunities that these new um, systems provide and that the regional benefits, I think that's when people will stand back and take a very different view of data centre location and operation in Australia. The reality is, telcos haven't been laying cable because there's no cost benefit. We've got Queensland Health talking just now about laying their own fibre uh, and, and the digital hospital programs in Australia won't take off without the connectivity they need. So literally they're having to lay the cable themselves as opposed to rely on telcos. Do you think the telcos will take a different attitude now? Or? Well Australia has a, a, unit, a uniqueness about it um, in that Unlike most countries in ASEAN, it really isn't relying on the telcos for uh, its future. The telcos can do what they want to do. But there's also other telcos who aren't immediately uh, well known. People such as Vocus, TPG, Datacom. These are all billion dollar companies with billion dollar networks. Um, if Telstra or Optus want to take a particular view, that's fine. They can and do take different views. And um, one thing Australia has with that is an extremely vibrant, almost subculture in terms of networks. If you want to run networks or you want network service in Australia, you actually don't have to take, turn to the telcos, which is actually almost unique throughout ASEAN. Thanks to Bevan Slattery and some of the changes made. Hey. Um, so you're based in ASEAN typically. Uh, you've got a huge amount of experience in Singapore. Um, are, you, are there major differences between the two economies you see? And like, what, what do you think Aust Australia could learn from Singapore? Um, well, again, that's interesting. Um, in some respects, um, uh, Singapore has a uniqueness about it because it's a hub. If you look at it in terms of data center capacity, at around about 400 megawatts IT loads, it, they're fairly similar. And even if you actually look at the, the major customers, they're not dissimilar either with some regional variations. So I'd look at Australia as a country and Singapore as 
a point, it's a hub. And in terms of what uh, each could learn from each other, I do actually feel that um, there's a lot that the Australian industry could actually bring to those areas as well. Um, if you look at ASEAN more broadly, and um, again, Singapore is a little bit of an outlier. You have to really look at the ASEAN countries and you split them into two groups and it very much neatly designed, devised along, say, GDP per capita. And you see the level of activity there. And for me, there's a huge potential in all of those countries to develop. And if I look at what Australia could, and I hope will do in the next 10 years, um, I genuinely believe that Australia could actually be a major infrastructure builder for all of those areas. I was going to say, you think that WA could now provide cloud services into ASEAN with the new connections? Absolutely. Um, uh, one thing I found in my research uh, for my presentation was just how little business um, uh, ASEAN and ANZ actually do, comparatively speaking, and particularly in terms of telecommunication services. And so the opportunity for that to change is huge. So two last questions. Um, one is on with the theme of the event. Uh, what do you think is the most important thing individuals across the value chain should consider when they're trying to de deliver a resilient digital infrastructure? Um, again, I think the definition of resilience is changing. And I think this comes from two areas. We tend to look at data centers as resilient buildings. And that's true. The data center itself needs to be a resilient facility. But now, I think, the, the era of the single data center has gone. We're now talking about operators who have multiple data centers, multiple network links, and we now have to look at resilience in terms of resilience of groups of buildings and networks. And so perhaps an emphasis away from single billion of resilience into um, wider levels of resilience, which is more focused at the application and network level, is where we will be going in future. And a lot of the cloud architectures already rely on this. Um, and I think this is quite important when you look at the Australian context because um, I think in terms of infrastructure, a lot will change in Australia. Um, Australia is not immune to the rest of the world in terms of its needs, but it also has some very particular requirements. And uh, after the summer we've just been through, um, I think taking a view that data centres will be allowed to be significant water consumers in 10 years' time is risky. Yeah. And also, um, some speakers have already spoken about renewable power. Renewable power is happening in Australia. Um, there may be a different dialogue at federal level, but if you actually look at what's happening at state level, then targets of 50% renewables by 2030 are more than realistic. Yeah. And so the data centre industry is going to need to move to be a renewable power consumer. Yeah. And that has huge impacts in terms of how data centres will be designed, how they'll be operated, and also how they're viewed in terms of resilience. Well, we're ultimately headed to a per capita energy limit one of these days, aren't we? And Australia seems to be sh well short of the power gen, so I don't think we have much choice, do we? Yes, I believe so. So, um, final question. What can uh, leading executives in Australian organisations in this industry do to make sure we don't miss out on some of the opportunities? A lot of people are talking about the revenue gap of what we could miss out on unless we really grasp the digital age. You got any ideas? It's very important to for Australia to look outwards. Um, Australia has always suffered the tyranny of distance, uh, a level of glorious isolation. Sometimes it works for it, sometimes less so. But now it's really important to view Australia as part of the wider data centre ecosystem. Um, the cable connectivity uh, is physically, it, if not physically, is practically moving Australia closer to ASEAN. And the real opportunities in those areas. Um, also at the same time, something I find interesting is who owns it all and work if you say the data center industry is a utility certainly becoming that way and you look at other Australian utilities and you say well we know who owns them it's a, a fun fact but true but Australia owns virtually none of the data center industry and the signs are it will own even less in the future and so I think there are many opportunities in the data center industry for Australia to be a, a vibrant part of it and none the least of it is funding it and also looking at the wider context and make sure Australia really becomes a true global partner to many of these companies. John, thanks for your insights today and look forward to your presentation tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.